Chapter 7 Laying the Foundation of the Freedom Struggle The renaissance which took place in the 19th century sowed the seeds of national unity in India. This process was accelerated due to the new educational system and the growth of the press. The feeling of unity, love of motherland, pride in our cultural and historical traditions, indignation against injustice, all these together led to the growth of a national consciousness in India. The foundation of the Indian National Congress was also an expression of this nationalism. Nationalism was not just a political ideology. Rousing the people against the economic exploitation perpetrated by the British was also an expression of this nationalism. Centralization of Administration Under the British Rule The British established a centralized administration in India and applied their policies uniformly all over the country. They also laid down a principle that all people should have an equal status before law. The British introduced railways, roads and other facilities of communication and transport in India. These two proved beneficial for Indians. Indians living in different provinces came into more contact with one another against this background. This led to the development of a national feeling among them. Economic Exploitation of India the imperialistic policies of the British led to the economic exploitation of India. India's wealth was being drained towards England in many ways. The middle class was forced to bear the burden of a variety of new taxes. The peasants were crushed by the burden of land revenue. Their wretched condition was made even worse due to famines. The working class was being exploited by the capitalists. As a result, there was a deep discontent in the minds of all. Some Indians wrote books to express their views against this economic exploitation. For example, Dadabhai Nauroji showed how the British policies exploited the Indians economically and drained India's wealth to England. The Impact of the Western Education The British introduced Western education in India. Through this education, young Indians imbibed the values of rationalism, humanism, equality, liberty, a scientific outlook, democracy and nationalism. The educated people began to feel that they should bring about the upliftment of their country on the basis of these values. Thus, Western education lent a modern outlook to the national sentiment of the Indians. Study of Oriental Learning In the latter half of the 18th century, some Western scholars had started doing research in the field of ancient Indian history and culture. The Asiatic Society at Kolkata edited and published hundreds of manuscripts in Sanskrit, Persian and other Indian languages. Indian scholars like Dr. Bhau Daji Lard, Dr. R. G. Bhandarkar also carried out research which gave an impetus to the study of Indian history and culture. This made a valuable addition to the study of Eastern culture, that is, to Oriental studies. The knowledge that India had a rich and ancient cultural heritage aroused the feeling of national pride among the Indians. Newspapers, Periodicals and Literature In the 19th century, printing as a profession grew rapidly in India. 
Newspapers and periodicals were published in regional languages as well as in English. They carried articles about the social, economic and political conditions in the country. Newspapers such as Darpan, Prabhakar, Hindu Patriot, Amrit Bazar Patrika, Kesari and Maharatta rendered invaluable service in bringing about political awakening. Criticism of government policies and suggestions regarding the measures for the progress of India appeared in these papers and periodicals. Bankim Chandra Chattopadhyay in Bengal, Vishnu Shastri Chiprunkar in Maharashtra and others created political awareness through their writings. The middle class which had received Western education assimilated the philosophy of democracy. They firmly believed that the people must have a place in managing the affairs of their country. They were enraged by the attitude of racial superiority of the British administrators, the subordinate position assigned to the Indians in the administration and such other things. They realized that organized efforts were needed to put their grievances and discontent before the government. This realization led to the foundation of provincial political associations. The background to the foundation of the Indian National Congress. The educated Indians felt that they should be politically organized against the unjust British policies. Their objectives were to get justice through lawful means, to awaken the people and to convey people's demands to the government. With this end in view, provincial political associations were established in different parts of the country. Surendranath Banerjee desired that the Indian Association formed in the Bengal province should become the center of an All India Movement. In 1883, he organized an All India National Conference at Kolkata. Over a hundred representatives from different parts of the country attended the conference. This was the first step taken by the Indians to form an All India Organization. Foundation of the Indian National Congress the first session of the Indian National Congress was held in the Gokuldas Tejpal Sanskrit Patshala in Mumbai on 28 December 1885. Vyomesh Chandra Banerjee was the president of this session. 72 representatives from various parts of the country attended this session. Together, they founded the Indian National Congress in this same session. A British officer, Alan Octavian Hume, also took initiative in the foundation of the Indian National Congress. Different national issues were discussed in this session. A place for Indians in the administration of the country, curtailment in the expenditure on army and other demands were made at this time. These demands were presented to the British government. The foundation of the Indian National Congress paved the way for India's freedom struggle. The Objectives of the National Congress the objectives of the Indian National Congress were to bring together the Indians living in different parts of the country, to create a feeling of unity among them irrespective of the differences of religion, race and caste, to provide them an opportunity to understand one another's problems and views, and to discuss the measure necessary for the uplift of the country. The Progress of the Indian National Congress the leaders of the National Congress were inspired by modern ideas and the love of motherland. They believed in the principles of liberty, equality and fraternity. They believed in constitutional means. They hoped that the British would give a positive response to their demands if the Indians followed constitutional means. The sessions of the Indian National Congress were held every year. This made the people aware of their problems. They felt that they should get organized to resolve their problems. The Indian National Congress aroused public awareness by raising its voice against the government oppression, economic exploitation, corruption, etc. The Indian National Congress insisted on securing political rights for the people. Dadabhai Nauroji brought India's problems to the notice of the public in England. There was a growing response to the National Congress from the public. In 1890, the government issued an order to put a ban on government servants attending the sessions of the National Congress. The National Congress aroused public opinion against this unjust government policy. This forced the British government to withdraw the order. 
but soon the policy of the British government became more aggressive. With a view to creating discord among the Indian people, the British adopted the policy of divide and rule. This added to the discontent in the minds of the Indians and the freedom movement became more intense.